<clears throat> Hello folks, this is Jeffrey Fox again. I'm the instructor for Big Data Applications and Analytics, or X-Informatics, and this is the uh, unit on the Internet of Things and Sensors. And we're at lesson two with examples of robotics and Internet of Things expectations. So that's what this thing says here, lesson two of the section slash unit on the Internet of Things and Sensors. One of the most you know, really interesting areas of big data, which is rapidly changing. So here's a pretty interesting plot, which comes from this wonderful source, Business Intelligence. And it's the size of the Internet of Things. We've pointed out there's all sorts of different uh, estimates of this, and um, this one's up at 34 billion by 2019. And what's interesting about this is sort of actually we're now sort of here. Um, we were there, we should say there. We were there, okay. But we have these uh, known things, personal computers, smartphones, which are actually the largest of the named objects, tablets, smart TVs, wearables, pretty small, surprisingly. Connected cars, well, that's not too surprising. Uh, although I actually am waiting to buy my next car, I will wait till it's fully connected. I having had waiting for many years for one that's got decent um, elect battery and things and given up. But what's remarkable is the growth in the green. The green is the one that's growing fast. And this is unlabeled, so what is it? Well, it's um, hmm, drones, robots. Tags attached to polar bears, who knows what it is. I'm not quite certain, that's one of my questions. But anyway, it's pretty interesting to see how big it's growing. It's growing by, uh, in 1919, it's estimated to be uh, 24 billion devices. And the, the total of the rest is more like 10. So here are some examples they give. Here we have a frightening looking uh, security guard. What would happen if you uh, dropped your uh, Cookie wrapper on the floor or of a Microsoft campus, it would arrest you and uh, shut you up in a Windows prison. They have a really strong threat there. Windows prison. Okay, fine. So, um, so anyway, that's a, se a robotic security guard from Microsoft. This is more interesting uh, in the sense that um, we have this. Uh, concept of using robots inside our warehouses. And uh, here is a whole array of amazing robots. The numbers, number robot number 1512, probably 1112 in this particular warehouse uh, complex. Anyway, it's meant to be saving $900 million annually by using such robots. And the next slide shows a remarkable quantification of this. So here is the number of these Kiva robots. Um, Amazon purchased Kiva systems, uh, and I gather it's made a huge positive impact. Anyway, here we are, end of 2014, 15,000 of those robots, or similar robots. And whenever you um, call something in, these robots will scurry around and do your thing. It's pretty interesting. Actually, that reminds me, I was reading today, a. Uh, uh, report from what happened in the Christmas season. And at least in New York, where Amazon offers very quick turnaround, the final um, thing delivered was ordered at a, a little after 10, 10 p.m. on Christmas Day. And it was delivered about one hour later by Amazon's express delivery system. So that shows how, um, you know, that shows the trend in this, in this uh, Online world that we're getting, we're trying to merge the benefits of driving in your own car, uh, which is of course not so easy in New York, maybe, and with the uh, with the advantage of the online choice and the ability to sit with your feet up, as a uh, well, you wouldn't in the past you would be looking, watching TV with the feet up, but now you would actually, of course, be using your uh, your um, TV caster to cast your streaming video onto your a hundred inch uh, screen and um, watching whatever you wanted to watch at that time of night. Okay, some here, some comment about floor cleaning robots from a company, iRobot. 
and it estimates by around now that they will have um, there will be a total of eight million home robots for cleaning. Pretty interesting number. It's just and it's sort of well, you know, it's these are all these things have happened in the last two or three years. Pretty interesting. Remember, look, this is 2010, so not so long ago. And of course, we know the importance of drones. Drones have revolutionized warfare, but they can also revolutionize civilian life by buzzing around and let's say dropping, dropping uh, dynamically um, uh, your products. And again, I read recently that one of the attractions of drones is that if Amazon looks at what it delivers. Most of what it delivers don't weigh more than a few pounds, and those are pretty easy to put on a drone. So. Uh, this concept of drones is pretty interesting. Now again, it looks as though DOD has got a lock on it. It's got 10, 10 billion dollars worth of lock, whereas civilian is only a couple of billion dollars, even in 2023. Here I make a prediction. I think this is underestimating the importance of civilian drones, but that's just me. I just think that if we can just get past those conservative people who regulate it and um, that won't happen in Europe. Europe's dominated by regulation. But uh, here, there's some chance we might be able to do it. And of course, in China, it's bound to happen. So drones are going to be important somewhere else of the world, at least the parts that are going to be the leading parts of the world. And here are some examples of drones. This is pretty nifty. Amazon Prime Air with this little delivery. And here's a DHL and another major. Uh, package deliverer, and these are all. Uh, I think they all look like quad. These are quadcopters. Whether this is quad or one, two, three, and this might be a hexacopter. There are all these interesting. Con it's sort of interesting. The drones are always built around these multiple uh, rotating uh, engines, whereas of course traditional helicopters have just had one or possibly two at each, one at each end. But these are all, these small devices are built around different principles. I don't quite understand the aerodynamics as to why you have such rather different approaches. But it's still pretty exciting to see what's going on. And so that's the end of this short section on why robots and the Internet of Things are, go, are so exciting and why they have lots of nifty applications. And please don't get locked up in a Windows prison. Anything more than that. Actually, it's probably equally bad to be in an Android prison, but um, <coughs> at least you'd be in a modern prison if you were locked up in an Android prison. So, okay, that's it. Thank you very much from Jeffrey Fox.